Hey guys, today's video is all about sharing the secrets I use to make this award-winning presentation. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So, a few years ago, whilst I was doing my PhD, I entered this poster into two different conferences. One was a school-wide conference and one was a university-wide conference. And I was very grateful to win these awards as you can see on the screen. But then it dawned on me, how did I win this? What was the reason behind it? So I thought to reverse engineer my thought process and depicting certain elements in this poster that made it so successful and sharing those secrets in this video try to help you try to get some awards for your research in terms of recognition in a poster format. So if you're looking to put together a poster, I think these secrets and these little tips and tricks might be a benefit for you. And you never know, you might even win an award. And if you do, don't forget about me. But without further ado, let's get into the first tip on trying to make an award-winning poster. So as you can see, I've got the poster on the screen, and you should be able to see over here. I thought just to go through the first tip, which is all about colour and style. Now the key thing is that when a lot of people looked at this poster, it drew, it drew their attention. It was very eye-opening, it was very catching in terms of the eye. The colours were very coalescing, the, the works really well. And a lot of people sometimes forget that the colours of the poster sometimes can be as important as the text. Now, very importantly here that there should be a balance between the colour and style. So, I've seen in many poster competitions where the colours are too much of importance, they're too vivid, they're too extreme, and it takes away from the text. And conversely, you see people where, where the poster is very boring, it's just pure white with a bit of grey, and it's not appealing from a distance. Now, one of the key things why this tip is really important is Look at your poster from a metre or two metres away. Is it drawing attention? Is it gathering some people's attention? So if you look here, the, the top and the, and the bottom banner, I made it this kind of orange copper colour. And I thought, okay, what would work well with that copper colour? Had this blue background. And then to add that layer of colour and style, what would pop, what would be really eye-catching in terms of the text? That was the white text. And then if you notice here, little subtle nuances is the colours of the bar graphs looking at which one's really important, highlighting them in that vivid colour that would be, whether it's contrasting, whether it's sticking out, whatever it is, I chose this little orange because it was really kind of popping from that blue. And then as you can see on the table, your eyes immediately get drawn to the H1, H9, H12 and Sidirinib because I've highlighted them in orange. And then you can see the things that are really important, the things in yellow, inhibiting endothelial cell migration, cell growth, cell migration. You know what's funny, I haven't looked at this poster for so long and it's bringing me back pretty cool memories. But you can look at how eye-catching the poster was. And I spent a lot of time looking at colour combinations, looking at things that would pop a lot more than things that would be quite plain and a bit passive. So you've got to remember, if you're walking past this in the first two seconds, is this poster going to grab your attention? And if you're looking to win a poster competition, that's one of the key things you need to look at, first of all. So I gave a lot of importance, more than perhaps people think, in terms of colour and style. And not just about the colour, but look at the, the breakdown. Things are very easy to follow. Even the even look at the titles. I made great importance on making that copper colour behind the title. Just add some kind of nice style to it, add that little bit of kind of continuity but also to make it very attractive to look at. And that's the thing, is you want to make sure it's very attractive to look at. And you'll see towards the end of the video how you need to balance attractiveness with what the competition is asking for. Because you can make an incredibly attractive poster, but if it's not in the guidelines to post a competition once, it's not going to actually help. But let's move on now to number two. Now number two is all about the text layout. Now as you can see here, I looked at what was the best kind of combination of text to make sure that it's easy to read, there's not too much text, but it's also easy to follow. Now, easy to read is one thing in terms of making sure the text is straightforward, it's easy to follow from, from line to line, but also following it in terms of the actual poster itself. So going from one chapter to the next chapter to the next chapter. Now, this is very important, as you can see over here, because you can see the introduction, and as it goes into the materials methods, see the results nice and bold and obviously now you see the discussion and conclusion on the right. Now what's really important for the text layer is I spent a lot of time looking at the right font, the right size and also the right dimensions of these columns. Now you're probably wondering why are a lot of posters in columns? 
Now they should be because, like you see with newspapers, like you see with other headlines, it's easier to read down than it is to across. Because your eyes have to go from left to right. Whereas if it's in a column, you just go down. Hence why you see a lot of things which are quick in terms of access for information, they are written in paragraphs. So what I did here, you see in terms of line spacing, in terms of letter spacing, I made it extra important to make sure, okay, what font could I use that was easy to read, but also not boring. Again, it's that balance between the two. And if you look at the actual letter spacing, it's compact, so it's quicker to read, but it's not too compact that it's squashed. Again, with the line spacing, it's not too dissimilar where your, your eyes have to move down further to read the text, but it's not too squashed that it looks compact and it looks too concise in terms of taking up only a little bit of amount of space on the poster. So you can see that if you were to read it from down, it's actually quite nice and easy to read. The text, even if you were to look from a distance, you can actually pick up certain words. And again, it's that balance that if you were to glance across it, can you actually read certain words from a distance? And when you go down a bit further, is it in a font that's easy to read, but is it not too boring? And because of the colours and that are popping with it, that text and colour combination worked really well. That's why a lot of people who came to this poster when it was on, they actually started to read a lot of it because it was easy to read. The text layout and also the text font were very, very important. Now moving on to the third and kind of final tip is that a lot of people may not realise the presentation itself is as important as the poster that you put on. Because they call it a poster presentation, the poster is just there as a cue for you to trigger certain conversations and dialogue when you are presenting a poster, whether it's a one minute poster, whether you're at your kind of stall and, and examiners are, are walking around trying to you know look at your poster and then give you like, I think two minute or five minute uh, presentation. That thing is very, very important. So what I looked at, it, I looked at my poster as an actual cue. I never once looked at the poster. I knew I memorized where everything was. So imagine now you're looking at me and I'm you're the examiner. I'll be like, as you can see over here, the angiogenesis is actually really, really important from the vascular disease point of view, looking to cancer and to cancer therapy. But if you look over here, you can see the results. Now the results are very important because A H one da da da. So I was keeping engaged with, with the reader but knowing where everything was. They might have glanced maybe one or two seconds. But I was never looking at it like that. Da, 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 da. I was always talking to the examiner. Now, what I made sure is that I asked a lot of rhetorical questions, of which my answer was the answer later on. So, for example, have you heard of anti cancer therapy? You might have heard of this, but probably not anti angiogenic therapy. Now, the drugs that I was using, you might be wondering okay, they're naturally scaffold. These naturally scaffold are actually found in pigments in petals. It's what gives it their very vivid colour. So I use that structure, as you can see over here, to look at modelling new actual drugs that may have anti-angiogenic activity, as you can see over here. So you see what I'm doing now? I'm creating, make sure I, there's a lot of importance on the presentation itself. So I never read what was from the poster. I never looked at the poster itself, I just used it as cue points. So for example, the introduction, the materials methods, the results, even looking at the discussion. I'm not looking at the poster, I'm looking at you, but I knew where everything was. So one of the key tips in terms of my poster that I actually got told was that your poster was really good, but your presentation really matched what the poster was showing. And for the university-wide conference, where they had a bigger emphasis on the presentation, they said that what helped you to get first place was that your poster was really great to look at. It was really nice, really engaging. But how you presented what's on the poster was really a really great combination that helped you to get that first place. So really make sure that you understand the importance of the presenting the poster, using the poster as key points, making sure you engage with the examiners, making sure you ask the, there's a nice story to what you're saying. You're pointing towards different elements on the poster without looking at it. You're asking rhetorical questions. You're guiding the examiners throughout your poster. That is very, very important. Now lastly, just as a little bit of a bonus tip that many of us, including myself, when I first started my PhD, before I got to this stage, was not understanding the posters, recommendations and guidelines in terms of entry requirements. So if, like with anything in life, if you want to be able to win or compete, you need to learn the rules. You need to know the rules of the game, the rules of the competition. So my advice is that if you're going into a poster competition, if you are able to, if it's university-based or if it's an international conference, do your homework. Really study what the guidelines, what they are looking for. Because a lot of times the entry requirements are the examination requirements. 
and even to the point where you can speak to the previous year's winner look at what they did look at what they focused on do your homework from that point of view because sometimes you can actually speak to the previous examiners and they may be able to shed some light within reason about what the examination requirements were and a lot of the times when I did this for the university wide competition I spoke to the examiners and spoke to previous winners looking okay what were they examining you on what were they looking for and I tailored my presentation and my poster towards that to give me the best possible chance to actually succeed have a cracking poster have an awesome presentation and potentially a chance to win an award so guys, those were some little secrets, little tips and advice as to how I made an award-winning presentation. And I hope you can with your poster. If you got, if you want me to give any feedback, if you've got any questions, find me on Instagram at amir.phd if something quite quick. But if you want me to look at your poster, if you want me to give some more feedback, you can find me out here at amir at researchtribe.org. More than happy to share some little bits of advice. If you are looking to submit a poster and you wanted some of my feedback, more than happy to help out and if you want any other advice you can find me here on youtube with lots of videos here for you to watch you can consider subscribing if you would like to and some little shorter form content on my page as i mentioned at amir.phd however i should let you crack on with making your poster and I hopefully see you at a conference you never know you might say hi it'd be pretty cool actually meet you at a conference meet anybody who's watching these videos and say hey i watch your youtube video Maybe that will happen, you never know. However, I shall let you carry on. Speak to you soon. Take care.